Hey guys, today I'm going to be walking you through how you can build your online portfolio without having any prior internship experiences. The first question is, I don't have any internship experiences, what can I add to my online portfolio? When I was working on my portfolio pretty early on, I this is what I did. I went back through my relevant courses, things that showcase some of the skills that I have that would be appealing to potential employers and let me just look at one example here. So I've got the Python binary calculator. This was an assignment um, for one of my data structure, a data structures class and what I did was put just a little tagline, it's a couple, two to three sentences about what the project is and then I have key features so it's just bulleted points. Uh, there's four or five bullets that say what um, what skills are showcased through this project. For Python I've got utilize linked list data structures, use functional abstraction, use full binary um, operation implementations. I looked at the assignment itself, so the assignment requirements. My final project um, had to document some guidelines on what you can do to fulfill the final assignment requirements and these were already listed in there so the benefit of using that um, I am relying on the fact that my computer science faculty has already put a lot of thought into what these assignments will require um, given that they want their class to be really successful they want their students to be able to find competitive job opportunities internship opportunities so backtrack a little bit how do they actually allow you to develop those skills in the classroom it's in these it's in all of your assignments it's in this final assignment especially so in the requirements for that my final project it was listing out these items and I just took them um, grabbed a few of those phrases and put them into key features and then so I've got the description the key features of it and then I put a little tagline that say code available upon request so this is part of what one of my classmates was concerned about. Is it ethical? Is it okay for me to put my code online? And to that, um, from having prior conversations with my academic advisor, I would say no. But if you put code available upon request, the employers will know, potential employers would know that you're serious, you've got an ethical groundwork that you're not just going to put the code because this is your class assignment, but you are open and flexible to being able to provide that. Um, so that they can take a look and dig deeper if needed. So, just full disclosure, I've actually never had somebody ask me for my code. The next question is, where do I put my portfolio? So where do you put your portfolio? Um, if you're not ready to pay for a host and figuring out what the domain and everything and put it, piecing that together, I would say just use your LinkedIn. Um, chances are you've already started building out a little bit of your LinkedIn portfolio, or LinkedIn uh, profile, I should say. A great way to showcase some of your projects and portfolio items is just at, under your education. So in LinkedIn, you can go in and you can add projects under the school you're attending. So say you're, uh, I'm at Berea College. If I had, if I chose to showcase my portfolio items on LinkedIn, I would go to my page and go to Berea College and then add project. So each of my final projects, things that I wanted to showcase that are related to school, I would just add them as projects. And I highly encourage you, if you do that, you can add um, an image that's really attractive related to your work there. Maybe you and your partner, if you're pair programming, or a screen cap of the final result if there was a GUI you were interested in showcasing. So those items can go right in there and it's clean, it's professional, people are already looking at your LinkedIn, and it's easy to manage. You don't have to figure out all that nasty world of how to make your own site, do I need to code my own site, is it going to look better for potential employers. I know you're a student, you don't have a lot of time to do all that, and I would encourage you to try that, piecing that together as time goes on. But if you were at a place and it was in your budget to go ahead and start thinking about making a site, I would encourage you to look at webhostingforstudents.com. That's where I get my host. It's just $25 a year for a single host. Um, and I get my domain from namecheap.com. So I'll, I'll link those in the description box below. Another question that I've been asked is, should I freelance to build my portfolio? I would right off the bat say no if your reasons 
behind considering freelancing is just to build your portfolio. That's a great option um, if you have the time, but if you are concerned, if you have a lot of things and other responsibilities such as your school work, your school assignments, um, maybe you have a part-time job, you might also be trying to look for internships, I'd say no. Um, I really would caution you not to look for freelancing opportunities because you may spread yourself too thin and you already have, I've already listed out how you can build your online portfolio with your school assignments. Um, your first step really is to just to dig into your files and figure out how you can make some copy for each of those. And really at the end of the day, if you're looking at the assignments where you, you like to showcase, you only need two paragraphs total length to um, explain those assignments and why, what skills you developed through making that project. And then finally, what are your real action items? I've listed out a lot of tips, um, things to consider, things to look at, but really what, do you, what is it that you can do right now to make the next move to building your portfolio? I'd say, one, go through your final projects and organize those files. So what I like to do is I have, um, in my Google Drive, my first folder system is academic, work, and personal. And so let's dig into academic. When you go to academic, I've got them listed out by semester. So recently, I mean, you would want to start with, say, spring 2016. Go to spring 2016, and then you'd list it out by class. And then when you go into each class, look at the classes that are relevant to the work that you're trying to find. And as you're slowly organizing these files, you'll find that you have a lot of work and great material to start building out your online portfolio. Thanks so much for watching this video. Um, again, I'm Angie Lee, and you can leave a comment below if you have any questions. I hope that these tips help you move forward with developing your online portfolio. Good luck with your internship search, and um, thanks again for watching. And jobs opportunities after your... <laughs> what are you doing? I can't. She's right. too cute. And, um, a desktop application as well. So without further ado, my name is Angie Lee and we're going to dive in and explore some of the things that I've learned this month with proper air handling.